Look at the couple of verses of scripture here in the word of God. First of all, we want to go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And if we don't finish it up today, we we'll continue on. But I pray that it will truly be a blessing to your heart. Matthew chapter 24. Last Wednesday night, we were looking at this chapter. And so we want to look at this one verse of scripture. We read a couple of verses Wednesday night. But here in Matthew chapter 24, we're looking at verse number 3. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 3. You're there? This is what verse number 3 says in Matthew chapter 24. You can't miss it. Matthew, first book in your New Testament. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Question number one. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Question number two. And at the end of the world. Wow. Universally, professors, scholars, religious leaders from all different religions are focusing and trying to answer these questions. The disciples ask Christ, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. This morning in this message, we want to look at this part of it. What shall be the sign of thy coming? We have heard it oftentimes preach that Jesus Christ is coming again. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Now, to fully comprehend and understand this subject, Biblically, we have to go to the resurrection of believers. So let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And I want you to have your Bible in your hand. We will stand up here and read a couple of verses of scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Let us stand and we read verse number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. First Corinthians chapter number 15. We'll read verse number 12 to verse number 19. Read it prayerfully, read it carefully, and may God help us to see what He wants us to see in these verses of Scripture. And come to three. One, two, three. We'll read it together. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are from false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also, which are falling asleep in Christ, are perished. For if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Lord, we give you praise for the reading of thy word. And now we pray your Holy Spirit power upon the preaching of 
thy glory. Amen. Let me take your seats. This is one of my favorite verse. Verse to the 19. If in this light only Paul said, we have hope in Christ. We are, of all men, most miserable. That's what he said. Now when you study this, this few verse of scripture, it will truly bless your heart. He talks about the, the resurrection of the believers. On Monday last, Shay and I got a message in the evening part that a guy passed away and he happened to be in Suriname. I said, Shelly, oh, I'm so sad that I heard it in the evening. Had I known this Sunday or early Monday morning, I would have drove to Mongol to be a part of the funeral service. But then, my heart rejoiced also in the fact that I know him when he had his health. I know him when I used to go to church and listen to him as he opened the word of God and he preached about the God of heaven. And he opened the word of God and preached about the God of heaven and earth, about the great I am. I, I, I enjoy hearing him preach the word of God. And during the process of time, I have had him as my guest speaker many times at Cassava Oro and even here at Marina Fandori's staff. So I'm thankful to God that although he passed away, death has no victory over him because I believe in the Bible, God's word, holy and inspired. And I rejoice, I rejoice that I remember him not in his pain and agony, but I remember the many messages and the many messages that he has shared in this country, Suriname. Now, we go to verse number 12 in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And he said, Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then we have no hope below. We have no reason to look for Christ coming again. So Paul is saying that even way back then, there are a lot of people who will doubt the resurrection of the dead. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, verse 12, Paul said, how says some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Even way back then, people did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. And then he explained, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? You see that? If we don't believe in this resurrection of the dead, then we don't have no reason to look for the coming of Jesus Christ again. He's explaining this fact here. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Then Christ also died and was buried. He didn't come to death. If you don't believe it, but praise be unto God that he continue on to explain a few things. Now he said in verse number 14, look very carefully, but if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. So, I have said in the past, Christianity, the foundation of Christianity is Jesus Christ. We preach the gospel. We preach Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. We preach that Christ is alive and he's alive forevermore. He conquered death. If we don't believe that as preachers, and if we don't preach it and believe it, then we should close the church, I've said it in the past, and don't have a church service, because the foundation of Christianity is that Jesus Christ is alive, that we can sing and believe, I serve a risen Savior. Listen, Buddha, he was dead and buried, and that was the end of Buddha. Muhammad dead and buried. That is the end of Muhammad. Gandhi dead and buried. And that is the end of Gandhi. But when you come to Christ, it's a different story. Confucius dead and buried. And so it is. And all those people in the past.
But when you come to the Bible, when you come to the Bible, and that is why I challenge you many times, you want to know the truth, you open the Bible, this Bible, and put it against any other religious book, and you will know why. There is something about the Word of God. There is something about the Word of God that is more powerful because the Word of God is inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is explaining about his preaching. And that is why he said, I preach Christ. I preach the gospel. The gospel story is a story that gives hope to all mankind. He said in verse number 14, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. Our preaching has no meat, no essence, no faith, no belief. Our preaching is vain. And then he said, and your faith also is vain. And then look at verse number 50. You may miss this, but look again here at what he said. Yea, yea, and we, you and I, you and I, he said, yea, and we are false, false witnesses of God. If Christ be not risen from the dead, you and I are false witnesses of God. Why? Because we, look at that, because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not up. He said, then you are involved in this also. We are all witnesses, and we have witnessed that Jesus Christ is alive, and if we witness that Jesus Christ is alive, and we don't believe it, then we are what? We are false witnesses of Jesus Christ. Because he explained in verse number 16, For if the dead rise not up, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, listen carefully, your faith, my faith, our faith is vain. If you don't believe that he's alive, you are yet in your sins. We are yet in our sins. Verse number 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith, beloved, my faith, our faith, is vain. We have not. Vain. Nothing. Because we are yet in our sins. Then they, look at verse number 18. Then they also, they also, which are falling asleep in Christ, are perished. See that? Because they also believe in the resurrection of the dead. They put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. And if there is no resurrection, then they're all perish. They're all perish. You see that? But he explained further. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. How many times you've heard the question, I believe in Jesus Christ. Then why am I so sick? Every day. I believe in Jesus Christ. Then why do I have to go through these domestic issues and financial issues? As a believer in Jesus Christ, our victory and our blessings may not come here. You may live this life and have seen. And have pain and have sorrow. But we're not looking at here. What did the Bible said? We are just pilgrim and strangers passing through. Because in Jesus Christ and in our faith in Jesus Christ, we have so much beloved to look forward to. I'm going to show you from the Word of God. The believers passed. We have seen some right here at Calvary Baptist Church. Men that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You sit there and look at them. They were our friends. They were musicians. They were leaders in this church. And they passed away. We went and we sing and we rejoice. Why do we sing and rejoice? We rejoice because we say, Wow, he is gone to be with the Lord. He is in a better place. We sorrow no more. There is no pain anymore. There is
is no parking. We sing this song, what a day that shall be. We had a guy at, in another church that went to and I with Casado, and he loved the church, loved the preaching, and he told me, he said, once he told me in a very private conversation, he said, Pastor Gaines, I just want to go and be with the Lord. That's all I want to do. I want to go and be with the Lord. My body is in so much pain. I'm the doctor I go to. I go to all the doctors. I don't even know what is wrong with me. My body is in so much pain. All I want to do is to go and be with the Lord. The one Saturday, bam, I got a call that he's in hospital. I rushed there. It was about 10 or 12 minutes. I can't remember what hour. Between 10 to 12, I went to the hospital. The nurse said he's in this room. And I said, in, in, a, in a room? A special room. And she said, well, this is the room we put patients that we have no hope for. It's a death room he was in. The death room, first time I've been in the death room. I went to that room. I, I, exactly. The room that death was in that room. But he was lying on a bed there. And, and I held his hand. And I said, if you know, if you know Pastor Gaines is here, give me a sign. And they're just waiting for this guy to die. But this guy was waiting for me. And I held his hand and he held my hand and made one song. One song was like Recognizing that I was in the room and he was gone. And I remember the conversation. Pastor James, I want to go and be with the Lord. Why? Because he believed in the resurrection of the dead. He believed that Christ arose from the dead. He believed that Christ conquered death. That Christ crushed him. That death was swallowed up. And so he's looking for a better place. And how many more we know like that? All across the world. We have friends that have put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. And they are looking for this resurrection. And the Bible gives us that resurrection. Again, not from the book of some philosopher or some smart guy. The Bible, God's word, give us it. Read it for yourself and rejoice today. This is what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. He says, so also, verse number 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Glory be to God. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. But it is raised in power. All the sickness gone from our body. The cancer, the leukemia, all these different, you know, we, we just came back, Shelly and I, we go to church and every time you go, you hear about people suffering from all kinds of different cancer. So many sicknesses that they don't have cure for all these sicknesses. Too many sicknesses all across the world. And these are godly people. These are men and women who have dedicated They love the Lord and to see them walking in pain, to see them walking with limp and having pain and aches in their body. But what they're looking forward to, their hope is in Jesus Christ. They're looking forward for a better resurrection that this weakness body will be sown and raised in power. Look at verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Verse number 51. Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Look at the word we. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. How many times do we think twinkle? In the twinkling of an eye. The twinkle for a minute, how many times? In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. Look at that. For the trumpet shall sound. Praise be unto God. The trumpet shall sound. And the dead, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. We shall all be change. We shall all be changed. Christians, believer in Jesus 
Paul said, if in this life only you have hope in Christ, you are of all men most miserable. Our hope in Christ is not only in this life. Our hope in Christ is in the life eternal, the life everlasting, in abundant life, in a life that will not come to an end. It will be a reign with the King of Glory forever and ever. We shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last straw, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. Change into what? Well, after the service, you call the Lord and you ask him. I don't know. We shall all be changed. This natural body will become a spiritual body. Now, if you can come in secret and say, Pastor Gates, explain this to me fully. I will tell you right now, I cannot explain it to you fully because I myself don't know. But I have hope, and my hope is in Jesus Christ. Don't rush it in you. What is happening now across the world? People want to change. Everywhere you go, everybody want to change. They don't like their face, so they want a new face. They don't like their lip, so they want a new lip. They don't like their cheeks, so they want a bigger cheeks. Everywhere you go, people want to change. They don't like their butt, they want a new butt. People are changing all across the world. It's amazing what is happening. Do you know how amazing it is what is happening in the world? You guys watch television? Shell and I just came back. Guys don't want to be guy. Oh, when I was born, I was not born as a boy. So she, we want to be a girl. Then the girl, oh, I want to be a boy. And so you have so many sex changes going on. Everybody want to change. Everybody want to change. And you want the government to pay. You must pay for that. I don't feel like it. I want to be somebody else. Uh, everybody wants to be somebody else. When are we going to look in the mirror one day and say, I am, this is me. This is me. I can improve, you know, I can black my hair. I can improve a little. But this is me, man. The Bible tells us a change will come. As to what that change will be, God knows about it. Don't rush and get ahead of yourself. But the Bible is the Word of God. And the Bible tells us that we shall be changed. Oh, we will be part of that day. What a blessed, blessed day that will be. We have so much to look forward to, to rejoice and be glad regardless of what's happening all across the world. Beloved, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Paul said, our hope is in Christ. Our hope is beyond this life. Beyond this life. He said, for we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. I love this part of the scripture. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Then he says, O oh, death, where is thy sting? You have no sting anymore. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? You have no victory anymore. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give, which giveth us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory. Therefore, he said, my beloved brethren, do not depart from the world. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. Can you read that? That God take note, God take note upon everything that we do for Him in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why He's saying, be steadfast, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, beloved, for you to believe in the coming of Jesus Christ, we must believe in the resurrection of the dead. For if there is no resurrection, then Christ be not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is vain. Our witnesses for Jesus Christ is vain. Everything is vain. Then we have no hope. But glory be to God. There is a resurrection of the dead. Glory be to God that Jesus Christ arose from the dead. Glory be to God that He is alive and that He is alive forevermore. Glory be to God that the trumpet shall sound, Paul said, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord Himself, listen carefully, the Lord Himself, Jesus said that also in John 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I said, I. He's not going to send an angel. He's not going to send this person or that person or, or Michael or, or someone else or Gabriel. No. He said, I will come again. Then Paul said, and the Lord himself, the Lord himself, the trumpet shall sound, and the Lord himself, the Lord himself, you know, I'm telling you, boy, I don't think I'll ever, ever be popular in this country, sir. I don't think I'll be a popular preacher in Suriname, and I'm not looking to be a popular preacher. I've said it in the past, I'm too old for that. Listen carefully. When you see a king in heart, and you call him a brother in Christ, I don't. I don't. He's not my brother in Christ. Because he don't believe what I believe. I've heard many people go to church and they refer to a king in heart. Oh, these are Christians. They're not. Don't get interested. Read for yourself. Read for yourself. Do you know how many times they are given date and time for Christ to return? Never did. This is a false organization that is spreading like part of God. When people hear me say that, they get angry. Now, let me mention this. You see those Mormons that come around with a bicycle? They're not my brother in Christ. They're not. I don't call them my brother. They're not. Because they don't believe what I believe. You see, my, my belief is this. When you're going to tell me that you believe in this, but you also believe in the Book of Mormon, when you're going to tell me, oh yes, Pastor yes, I believe that the Bible is the Word of God, but I believe that the Mormon book is the Word of God. Uh-uh. That is not for me. You see, others may say yes, yes, but not us. You see what I'm saying? So try to understand what kind of preacher you have standing here on Sunday. When you say Muslim, no matter how long his beard is, and no matter if he went to Mecca or whatever he's done, and he comes with his Quran, he's not my brother in Christ. He's not. Or you see a pandit or an astrologer and you compare him with me. No, 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 no. He, I have nothing to do with him. He's lost. He needs Christ in his life. That is the way I address him. And that is why people say, well, as he is, all the people, all the other preacher, all the other preachers said, man, they are one with them. But he is, all the other preachers, are you the only preacher? Are you the only one that knows the Bible? No. I'm not the only one. But I know something that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So how can you go to the Father through the Pope, or through Mary, or Joseph, or Peter, when Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except you. 
So do you expect me now to accept Alexander Campbell? Uh, do you expect me to accept Joseph Smith? Do you expect me to accept all these people and say we are all one? No. Don't expect me to say that. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 11 that they were called Christians. Let me tell you why. If you call yourself a Christian, you must know why. Let me explain that. If you call yourself a Christian, right? If you say, I'm a Christian, you must know why you say that. Why do you say you're a Christian? What? You know why they were called Christian in the book of Acts? Listen carefully. Because they were believers in Jesus Christ. You know why? Because they claimed the word was used in the book of Genesis. Uh, he said, and Adam said, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cling unto his wife. It means that you, it, it's like a pasted glue that you're stuck. And, 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 and no matter how people try to pull you and pull you, you cannot break it. You, you claim it. The word is, is used in such a way that we are stuck with each other. And that is why Paul said, I am a bond servant for Jesus Christ. You understand what that is? If, if I want to, if, if I want to leave, I cannot believe, I cannot leave. Because I'm a bond servant. I am bonded with him. So don't tell people you're Christians if you don't know what a Christian is. Let me repeat it. They were called Christians in the book of Acts. You know why? They were called Christians because they were believers in Jesus Christ. Now, if you come and tell me you believe Christ, but you believe X, Y, and Z. Am I stupid? Is the Bible wrong? The Bible is not wrong. I may be stupid, but the Bible is not wrong. The Bible said they were called Christians because they were believers in Jesus Christ. Because they cleave like that. They cling, read the scripture, to the preaching of the word. See that? They cling unto the preaching of the word. 